All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is Mr. Rangel. Today we're going to learn about the War of 1812. War of 1812 was between America and yep, England. We had just got done fighting a war with England for independence, and all of a sudden we're fighting them again. And it all started with another war, a war between England and France. England and France were fighting, um, and because they always like to fight. And we like the we like the fact that they were fighting because they got their both both of them got their supplies from us. We were selling supplies to England and France, which was cool because we were making money. We liked the idea of making money. We said, "Keep on fighting, because the more you fight, the more we make money." But all of a sudden, England finds out that we're supplying the enemy. They tell us stop trading with France or else. And then France finds out and they tell us stop trading with England or else. And so uh, they threaten to, you know, attack our ships and to take our sailors and and our supplies and stuff. And so. We think about it, but we just go ahead and continue trading with both of them. So if we get attacked, all right, because the, the rewards are, are better than the risk, you know. We're gonna we're going to get beat up a little bit, but we're gonna make, still make a lot of money. So we continue. Um, but one of the big issues that came up during this war was the issue of impressment. Now, impressment is where the British uh, soldiers would kidnap Americans and force them to fight for them, and it was happening a lot, hundreds of Americans were kidnapped by the British and forced to fight uh, for the British in this war against France. And we didn't like it. So Congress, uh, we get upset. I mean, they're disrespecting our country. They're kidnapping our sailors, and um, we're getting upset. So we started complaining to the president. Well, the president at this time is President Jefferson. Now, President Jefferson decides to make a new law. And this law is called the Embargo Act. And he said, all right, from now on, no more trading with England and France. Just like that. He said, we're going to stop impressment. Impressment has started because we're trading with England and France. Well, let's just stop it. We're going to stop impressment. We're going to stop the British from kidnapping our sailors. So to do that, let's just stop trading with England and France. And the example I used, um, I got from the book, is trying to kill a fly on the window with a brick. You don't do that. Why? Because you can make the problem bigger. You might kill the fly, but you break the window and make the problem bigger. And this is exactly what happened. It was a bad idea because America started losing money. Our economy started getting affected because we kept on, we stopped trading with England and France. And so it happened that people, you know, traders still traded. They just didn't tell anybody. So the Congress started getting up, says that we got to do something. We got to do something. And especially the war hawks. These were congressmen who really wanted to go to war with England. They said, you can't be disrespecting us, England. You can't be uh, kidnapping our sailors. That is wrong. And we're not going to let you do it. So let's go to war. Let's go to war. Let's go to war. These congressmen, called the War Hawks, they were from the western inland states. They were the ones away from the coast. Now, why do you think they were so adamant and so eager, so gung-ho about going to war? Because they're not going to be the ones affected. The eastern coastal states, the ones that the states on the coast, they're the ones going to be affected, and they didn't want war. Why did they want war? Because they were going to be the ones who were going to affect, be affected with property, economic damage. Uh, if um, if if the uh, the war comes to the to the United States, which states are going to be affected first? Right, the Eastern coastal states. But didn't matter. Uh, the War Hawks won out, and they convinced a new president, his name was Madison. They convinced him to go to war with England. Now, Madison, being the, the brand new president that he was, he wanted to show off. He wanted to be, you know, I'm a tough guy. I'm not going to let England push me around. I'm the new president. i got to show off, make sure that people realize that they voted for the right guy. So he decides to go to war with England. This was a bad idea. Bad idea. Because um, the, England, the war with England... The war between England and France, it was just about to end. It really was. England was, was beating up on France, and France was losing. And uh, when we got involved, uh, we, we just made it long. We made the war last longer. If England, if England would have defeated France, that would have stopped impressment because there's no need to kidnap our sailors if there's no war. So all we had to do was wait. Wait a few months. Uh, the war with England, war with France uh, would have ended. And President would have stopped and would have, would have gone back to being friends again and trading partners, all that stuff. But instead, because uh, we get involved, the war with England and France lasts longer because now England's got to deal with these Americans who are trying to show up, you know, show off. But in 1814, something happened that changes everything. 
England defeats France. Finally, the Battle of, War, Battle of Waterloo. Napoleon is defeated, and it's over. It's over. And now England said, you wanted a war, America? Now you're going to get a war. Now instead of you, you know, giving us the leftover soldiers, uh, they're going to send all the soldiers, all the soldiers that were uh, fighting France. Now there's no war with France. Now they're going to come over to America. And what happened earlier, during before 1814, before Amer uh, England beat France, America wanted to show off, wanted to be a tough guy. They go up to, Eng uh, to Canada and they destroyed an important British building. They just burned to the ground. They were going to hurt England. You know, we're going to show them that we're tough. We're going to go find the nearest British building we could find and we're going to burn it down. So they go, up to they go up to Canada and they burn down a British building. Well, England didn't forget about that. England says, okay, America, now that, now that we're going to uh, uh, go to war with you for reals, we're going to go after you. So in 1814, 14,000 British soldiers come and they attack Washington. And what do they do? Yeah, they burn down the White House. It's actually called the Presidential Mansion, but they burn it down. And we are bummed out. It, it makes America sad, but it's at the same time, it motivates the soldiers, um, American soldiers. And now we want revenge. You know, we forgot that we were the ones who started it, but we want revenge for what they did to uh, the, the White House. And so the British now head on over to their next target. What's their next target? Right, New Orleans. Remember, New Orleans was the was the big trade city that we bought from France for you know part of the Louisiana Purchase, and it was a very important city because it connected the, the Mississippi River to the ocean. It was a great trade city, and this is where the British are headed to. And protecting the British is a general named Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson is there and he is protecting or defending New Orleans. And about 11 hours before the British um, show up, he gets the news that the British are on their way. So he to, doesn't have a lot of time to get ready, but he does. And in his army, in the British, in, I mean, in the American army that's led by Andrew Jackson here at New Orleans, we have some soldiers, we have some free African Americans, and we have some pirates. Yep, Captain Jack Sparrow was there, well, not really, but you know what I'm saying. Pirates were there, and the pirates were instrumental because they helped to, uh, with, with, with the fighting. You know, they're real good at shooting cannon, and, and, and it's just pretty cool that there were pirates there. You know what a pirate's favorite letter is? Yep, R. All right, so the Battle of New Orleans takes place on January 8th, 1815. About an hour of fighting, it's over. 2,000 British casualties, you know, dead and wounded, and the British are defeated. And as for American casualties, there's only 71. So this is a pretty big victory for um, Andrew Jackson and the Americans. It's pretty big stuff. And only thing was, back in a town called Ghent, Belgium, they had the British uh, representatives there, and then the American representatives were there. And the British asked the Americans, well, why are we fighting? Why are we at war? And the Americans said, well, because you, were kept, you kept on stealing our, 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 our sailors. Impressment. Because of impressment. You kidnapping our sailors, we're fighting you because you can't disrespect America. Well, England said, but you know, we're not doing that anymore. We're not impressing the sailors anymore because the war with France is over. Why are we fighting? The Americans said, uh, I don't know. And so England said, well, let, let, let's stop fighting. And the Americans said, okay. So they stopped fighting. And they signed the peace treaty. The war is over. Nobody wins. It's over. And it took place on December 24th, 1814, the day before uh, Christmas. Now, if you notice, look at the dates. Battle of New Orleans took place when? Right, January 8th, 1815. The peace treaty was signed, what day? December 24th, 1814. Now, this is not a typo, ladies and gentlemen. This is not Mr. Rangel making a mistake. This, uh, these are the actual correct dates. So how did this happen? How is the peace treaty signed, and then they go back to, and then the fight? How, why would they want to fight after the peace treaty was signed? Because that would mean that the battle never should have happened. So what's up with that? Right. Remember where, where the peace treaty was signed? It was signed in the city of Ghent, Belgium. That is over there in Europe. The battle took place in America. Now how long does it take for a message to go from Europe to America. Remember, they didn't have internet, they didn't have text, they couldn't send it by, you know, by, uh, by the internet. 
or phone, they couldn't call and say, hey, the war's over. No, they had to get on a boat and take the message across the ocean and finally bring it to America. And by that time, the battle had already taken place, so that battle never should have happened. They didn't get the news about the treaty before the battle took place. So it never should have happened. And uh, I feel sorry for all those men who died on that day because they didn't have to. So what are the results of the war? The results of the war are, are, are two, basically. First of all, it made a hero of Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson becomes a national hero, and the next time they go looking for a president, who are they going to pick? They're going to pick that hero, Andrew Jackson. And, but it also proved that America was a real country. We're not going to be disrespected. We are, you know, we're, a good, we're not going to be taken lightly anymore. It proved or, or g gave us that respect in the world. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The War of 1812. Uh, study those notes for the test coming up. I'm going to ask you a lot about, you know, who fought and, and who won and, and the battles and all that stuff. So review the, the notes. Make sure you're ready for the test. It's coming up soon. All right? All right, so there you have it. Uh, this is Mr. Rangel. I'll talk to you in class. All right, talk to you later. Bye-bye.